Oh, hello there. My name is Edward O'Mara, and welcome to the Rotgut Review. This coming Thursday, January 14th, we will be having a live stream where we drink a little bit of this, a half pint of 1960s Old Fitzgerald. We'll also be giving some away, so make sure you tune in. Today, in preparation for that live stream, we'll be delving into the backstory of Old Fitzgerald in what I hope will be the first of many in a series I like to call The History Behind the Whiskey. I mean, I mean whiskey. Just, just whiskey. The story of Old Fitzgerald doesn't actually begin with a man named Fitzgerald. It begins with S.C. Herbst, a Milwaukee-based liquor retailer. A story appearing in The Decanter in 1950 stated that the Old Fitzgerald Distillery was founded in 1870 by one J. E. Fitzgerald for steamship and railway passengers. However, this is not actually the case. John Fitzgerald never founded a distillery or owned the brand. It was C.S. Herbst who did. There seems to be some confusion as to whether Herbst bought an existing distillery or founded one outright, but in either case, starting in 1867, he was the owner and proprietor of the Old Judge Distillery, located on Benson Creek outside of Frankfort, Kentucky. It was Herbst who registered the brand named Jonathan E. Fitzgerald in 1884 and the name Old Fitzgerald in 1905. So if John Fitzgerald wasn't the owner of the distillery, then who was he? Maybe a distiller? A blender? Or maybe he was S.C. Herbst's secret lover? That last one's probably not true, but I like to believe it is. As best as anyone can tell, the real John Fitzgerald was either a government agent or possibly a security guard at the old judge warehouse, but definitely someone who had keys. We know this because Fitzgerald had a penchant for siphoning off whiskey from the best barrels for his personal consumption. Because of his good taste, particularly fine barrels at Herbst's blending plant became known as Fitzgerald's and Herbst applied the name to his brand as a byword for quality. However, the practice of stealing whiskey out of warehouse barrels would get C.S. Herbst in trouble at a time when he could least afford it, during Prohibition, when only a few distilleries were still making whiskey for <laughs> uh, medicinal purposes. According to an account from the famous Julian Pappy Van Winkle, a government gauger and a security guard at the distillery were caught stealing whiskey out of the barrels that remained at Old Judge, and the government ordered Herbst to bottle all the remaining whiskey he had. He approached Van Winkle's W.L. Weller Distribution Company and the Stitzel Distillery to accomplish this, and he also gave them the opportunity to sell some of the Old Fitzgerald bottles themselves. Van Winkle and his partner, A. Philip Stitzel, were interested in buying the brand outright, and were able to do so at the bargain price of $10,000, or about $130,000 adjusted for inflation. Under Stitzel Weller, the mash bill for Old Fitz was changed from the more standard rye and corn version to the weeded mash bill that the distillery was famous for, and the brand became the flagship of the distillery, as well as one of the most well-known bourbons across the world. This was due to the extra lengths that Stitzel Weller would go to ensure a top-grade product. Van Winkle refused to release any bourbon at less than 50% ABV, and many of the whiskies made at the distillery were aged for longer than 10 years. This included the Old Fitzgerald line, which was released strictly as a bottled-in-bond product during Pappy's ownership, and included a base 8-year, 10-year, 12-year, 15, and even an 18-year-old bourbon. However, Julian Van Winkle II, son of Pappy, was more willing to make considerations for the bottom line, and in 1964, just before Pappy's demise in 1965, Old Fitz Prime was released. This expression was 86.8% ABV and the first to not be bottled in bond. While the first editions would be aged 8 years, later versions would find the age statement slipping to 7 and even 6 years old. Unfortunately, Van Winkle II's tenure as head of the company came at a tough time for bourbon. There was a massive slump in sales as whiskey lost market share to clear spirits like vodka. In 1972, Stitzel Weller was sold to Norton Simon Incorporated, and it was renamed the Old Fitzgerald Distillery after its leading brand. This led to a tumultuous few decades for the brand, 
as it first became the property of Distillers Limited, the future Diageo, and its production was transferred to Diageo's Bernheim Distillery. In 1999, Bernheim and the Old Fitz brand were purchased by Heaven Hill, its current producer, who continues to make it with the weeded mash bill made famous by its Stitzel Weller days. In addition, Heaven Hill created a second brand inspired by the story of John Fitzgerald's theft, called Larceny, which became a nationally sold product in 2017. Unfortunately, these changes had caused Old Fitz Prime to become something of an afterthought in the modern market coming to be seen as a value brand at best. But in 2018, Heaven Hill released the first in a line of new bottled and bond Old Fitzes, heralding a return to form for the storied premium brand. And there you have it, a small look at the history of one of America's most well-known brands of bourbon. I'm including links below so that you can find out more on your own time. And also be sure to check out Sally Van Winkle Campbell's book, But Always Find Bourbon. Pappy Van Winkle and the story of Old Fitzgerald. It's a great book, it was really helpful for this video. Before we finish, I'm going to toast us off with a little bit of the modern Old Fitzgerald. Make sure to come by on Thursday for our live stream when we're gonna be drinking our fun little 1960s version. You could win a sample. Also, be sure to let us know which whiskey you want to know the history of down in the comments. Until next time, my name's Ed. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay rotten.